Welcome back everyone to our restaurant project. In this session we are going to build an order class. When someone comes into the restaurant they'll make an order for different appetizers, food and drinks and we need to be able to keep track of an order for a particular person or for an order for a group of people like say a family of four. So let's create a new file and we're going to say public class order of course we'll have space for our fields our constructors our assessors mutators our calculations or methods and our two string for the class. All right, since we are working with an array list, um, we need an array of orders. So we're going to say private array list. And our array list, each order is made up of a number of items. So it's an item class rather than a primitive data type like double or integer and we'll just call it order is equal to new array list and we'll pass in an item and then open close parentheses since we're working with array list we're going to have to import it so we'll say above the top and say import java.util dot array list And then for our constructor, we'll just do a simple one. Default constructor, public order. And there's nothing we have to pass into it. Um, we then need to make our assessors and mutators. So we will need to be able to add an item to the order. So we're going to say add item to order and we're going to say public void add item the methods void because we're not returning anything we're just adding an item to the array and we create a local instance of item and then we just say order dot add item And that's actually a method, not a mutator. Well, it's a mutator. So um, we'll just do get an item from the order. So we say public item, because we're returning an item. We'll say get item. And then we're looking for an item at a particular index. So we'll use create local variable called index. And then we'll say return order.get. And we'll pass in the index number to retrieve an item at that index from our array order. So now we have a, an assessor and a mutator for our order class to get a particular item. Another thing that we might want to do is to be able to clear the order. In other words, clear the array. Let's say somebody orders something and then decides that they don't want it. So let's say public void clear order. And then we want to say order dot clear. Um, we might want to remove an item clears the order we might want to remove an item from our order so we can say public void remove item create a local instance of item
And then we want to say order dot remove item. Array lists have a lot of nice built-in methods that allow you to work with them, like clear and remove and um, get. We might want to, um, for instance, we get an item from the order and then print it out. We might want to be able to get the order size. So we'll say get order size or get the number of items in an order. And so we say public int get size. And we're going to say return order.size. OK, I'm going to temporarily save this so I don't lose my work. You should do the same. And then another thing that orders have is an order number. So um, each order might be associated with a number in the restaurant. So we're going to say private and then static int order number. And we'll set it initially to zero. Now, the reason we want to use the static keyword is because uh, we want all instances of the order class to refer back to this one variable order number so that it gets the next order number. Um, if we didn't use static, it wouldn't refer back to this variable memory space, and therefore every time you created a new class of order, it, um, it would start with zero again rather than counting up. So we need to be able to, just like with the array, we need to be able to um, get the order number. So we'll say public int get number and then we're going to return order number. The other thing we might want to be able to do is to um, increment the order number. So we'll say increment order number. We'll say public int, no, sorry, void increment. number and all we're then going to do is use an accumulator of a variable so we're going to say order number plus plus Now, one thing, um, another thing that's associated with the order is the server. And so what I'm going to do is use a random number to choose who the server is for a particular order. So in this case, I need to import the random class. And then what I want to do is for my server, get server method. For the order, we're going to say public string get server and we're going to create a new instance of the random class rather than using random dot math dot random this time. So we're going to say random rand is equal to new random 
and this is creating an instance of the random class and then we're going to create a local variable called num and we're going to say ran dot next int and we pass in the max value that we want and we're going to add a plus one because we don't want zero for the number and then we're going to use a switch statement that we learned about in chapter six so we're going to say switch and we're going to pass in the number and then we'll have a case for each of our servers so we'll say case one and then if that's the case we'll return Brenda and then we'll break case two we'll return Polly and of course you can put in whatever names you like Case three, we're going to do Fred. And another way to do this would be to create an array of servers or array list of servers and then pull from the array list. So case four is going to be Robert. And then we need a break. And then this we forgot the break up here. And if we choose that case, then it breaks out of the switch statement and doesn't analyze the other ones. And we'll say case five is we'll return Sally. And case six we'll return Lily. And you can put more in for yourself or change these names as you see fit. And lastly, we need um, a default for our case statement. And this is if um, we don't get anything we need a, um, a default, so we're just going to say no server available. And then there's no break for that one. Well, we can put it in there anyway. Alright, and that's the end of our switch statement. And so we need to close parentheses there. So this is the end of switch, and then this is the end of the method. And then in our two string, we need um, so we'll say public string two string, and then we're going to say um, we want to be able to print out all the orders in the array list. So we'll say for int i is equal to zero as long as i is less than the order dot size. Keep going. There's more orders in the array. And then we'll create a local variable called str and we'll keep adding each order. So we'll get the order at a particular that particular index. We'll use the toString method for it because um, it's an item and therefore we're using the item toString. And then we just want to put a escape sequence so that at the after each order we have um, an enter. And if you wanted an extra space between the listings of each order, you could put in two slash ends. And that would give you a blank line when it prints out. So this is end of loop. And that's the end of the two string. And we need a semicolon there. Ah, and a semicolon there. And the semicolon there. It's today for getting semicolons, I guess.
and it wants me to create the local variables up here. So I'll do string str is equal to a blank string. Um, okay, well, let's take those out then maybe. Should need a break, but to return my string, so return str. All right, that's the it for the order class, and we will show you how to use the order class in another episode. See you next time.